All right. Hey, this is Amanda. I am going to do my first tutorial on how I create uh, name puzzles through Illustrator. So the first thing I do is create the outline and box that I'm going to use for um, the puzzle. So I go over to the sidebar panel and I click the rounded rectangle tool because I want the uh, rectangle to have softer edges and stuff for when kids are playing with it. And what I do is I just create a different size box, whatever's going to work for you. And I go in here in the size that I like to change everything to just because I feel like it's a good size for kids. It's easy to fit in the Glowforge and everything like that is I use a width of 11 inches and then I do a height of four inches. So there is our box that we're going to use, our rectangle for our puzzles. Then we go over and create a text box. And I just drag and put the text box in there. And I like to do a center align. You can do, if you wanna align it to the left, that's fine. And we're just going to do a name. We'll do Amelia, that's my daughter's name. And then I just increase the font just to make it easier visually for me to see what I'm doing. And this is the fun part. You can pick really any font that you're wanting. Um, usually I pick something that's gonna be bold. You don't want it to be too thin because you don't want it to be um, any fine lines that might break. So like if I was to use a font like this, this may be really difficult because it's all connecting and the pieces right here are going to be a little thinner and those may break with small kids. Um, so usually, where is the font? I do the Arial Rounded Bold. Um, that way it's thicker, it is easy to handle and everything like that. So then at this point, I make sure I'm on the selection tool. I will right click and create outlines. And I just drag it, center it. And then what I do next is I add a stroke around the letters because I still find that those are kind of thin and I just want to make sure they're they're going to be sturdy. So I go and I increase the stroke to five. So then at this point, if you look closely, you can still see that the path is inside and we want to make sure it goes to the outside of the letters. So at this point, I go to object, expand, fill in the stroke, hit OK. And then now we have all these different paths and everything like that. So at this point, we want to make sure that Pathfinder is open. Mine I keep on the side panel right here. And if you don't, you can go to Windows and hit Pathfinder, and that will pull this up. And then at this point, once we have it selected and everything, we will hit this Unite. Boom. And now it's added and put the path to the outside right there. So then the next thing that we're going to deal with on this name is that we have the eye. So there's a couple options that you can do. Um, you can glue in the eye separate so that it's not so much of a choking hazard. Or what I like to do is I will go double click several times so it's isolated. And then I will just arrow and drag it down to where it's touching the bottom part of the eye. So at this point, these are overlapping. So then I make sure I use shift, select both of those items, and then you can see that there is this path right here, and we want to unite those so that it's a continuous path so that it's not cutting these separate. Because if we left it, it would cut both of these lines. 
So we'll go and hit Unite. Then you still have that look. All right, um, the next thing I like to do, let me get out of isolation mode is I like to check to see where is my height level on these. I like to make sure that it is at least about two and a half inches tall, the letters. So this is gonna judge it based on where it is right here. So I'm gonna change the height actually to three and see how we like that. But, oh, hold on, let me undo that. I want to keep it proportionate still, so I want to make sure I constrain those. And then let me do the three on the height. That looks good. Now we're a little bit over right here, so I'm just going to drag it on each side to make sure that it looks good. So then another thing that you can do is if you get the grids open, let me make sure that this is not filled in so it's easy to see. Is you can go and double check to make sure this has one, two, three on this side. One, two, three. So let's drag this over so it's a little bit even. Now it's center. We have the same amount on each side. So we are good. So that is how you go and how I make my files for my puzzles on Illustrator.